Before I say anything else, I wanted to thank you for giving me time. When I first came here, I never expected that I would meet you or feel this way about you. That we would end up here, together. I did not wish to suggest that I did not believe you when you said we could make this work despite our differences. I hope I made that clear. There is no precedent for any of this. A romantic relationship not within the bounds of Barun culture, I mean. I wanted to attempt to honor that culture nonetheless. I know, and I love you for that. The point I am trying to get to is that I believe I have an idea. A way I can demonstrate my commitment to you. No, I do not think we do. I do not think we need someone to tell us what we already know about ourselves. I do not think some official makes what we have any more real. I was hoping that would be your response. This is between you and me, and no one else. You know who I am. I do not need to explain myself to you as I would to others. They might not understand, and I do not want that distraction. I want to be able to focus on us. So, as soon as you are ready, I want us to travel together to the second planet in the Shosa system. There's something we need to do there. Will we be taking off immediately, or are there other matters that require your attention? Working hard, Captain. Say your last goodbyes. Okay, Dad. Want to hear a joke? Uh, sure. Sweet thing. Yo, man, guys, just laugh. Okay. Who can jump higher than a skyscraper in New Atlantis? Skyscrapers can't jump! <laughs> <laughs> Neon. 
They'll take it from there. Thanks for bailing me out of this nightmare. Every world with living things is a treasure. There is little I can offer to show you how much I care, how much you mean to me. Whatever House Varun deems proper could not work, because you are not House Varun. And whatever marriage traditions you might have would not be appropriate for me. And I love you for feeling that way. But I did think of something. This place... Where we stand now is the first place I was brought upon leaving my city, Dasra. The first time I had ever left my home planet. As you know, I was never allowed to know the way back home. That frightened me. But at the same time, I was suddenly aware of not just one planet, but a whole universe I had never seen. That is a feeling I had not experienced again until I met you. was, yes. Nothing in my life had truly prepared me for that moment. Just as nothing could ever have prepared me for you. But there is more. Buried here is something of great value to me. Something I wish you to have. It is best, I think, if you are the one to retrieve it. What does your scanner reveal? You hold in your hands the most treasured item I could give you. It is indeed something very special. Let me explain. In my culture, every child is entrusted with a pet groat. They are domesticated creatures native to my planet. Smelly, cantankerous, but their milk is a staple of our diet. We raise the groat. We care for it. We milk it. And when we come of age, we slaughter the groat and fashion its skull into a dagger. It is a lesson. Through this growth, we are shown the connection that we have to the Great Serpent. That all things serve the Serpent, and can be tools for his use, in more ways than one. I am glad that you can appreciate that. Every member of House Varun has a dagger like this. We are instructed to keep them at our side at all times. The Great Serpent is always with us. 
as is the danger of those who defy and oppose him. But that constant connection to the Great Serpent is a liability to those of us sent out into the settled systems. So when we first leave our home, we hide it. Yes, it would make it a little more difficult to blend in. So for years, this dagger has remained buried here, hidden from the world. But now, I believe you should have it. With it, I hope you can understand that I trust you completely. That I know you will care for this the way you care for me. And that we are connected in a way that is now truly unique in the settled systems. In all of creation, I love you and I am yours. Wholly and completely. You are very welcome, and I know that you will. I would not have brought you here otherwise. Whew. Now, surely there is some other grand adventure that awaits us. We should go and meet it head on. takes all these different is it not?
Last night was enlightening. I hope to uh, learn more next time. Mom says we might go to Paradiso next year. She's all excited about spa days. I wonder if they have any good bookstores there. this incident as the second time I've saved you. It's not a competition, Sam. Sure it isn't. So there's that time at the asteroid belt, the one on Neon. So, um, I still owe you three, Lillian. Four. You always forget that cargo freighter with the explosives. Four. Definitely four, then. But, uh, Captain, in all seriousness, your help is appreciated. I'm glad Blake scooped you up when he had the chance. You're a hell of a ranger. Is Cora on board? Mom! Oh, babe girl. It's so good to hear your voice. Can we come over and visit? Sadly not now, honey. I'm still on the clock. Crime never sleeps. <sighs> At this point, I'd settle for a cat nap. I've been doing good. I managed to even have a social life. Well, a little bit of one. This has to be one of the signs of the apocalypse. Remind me again why I was happy to see you, Sam. I am planning a proper vacation one day. I hear Paradiso was nice. Is this the famous vacation you've been planning since before I met you? Always with the wisecracks. And Captain. Nice moves. It's good to know my daughter's in good hands. What about me? What about you, Sam? I'm kidding, kidding. You always said I need to have a better sense of humor. Uh, forget I ever mentioned that. <laughs> Take care. Some would say this place represents all the worst impulses of humanity. Hey, what can I do for you? Got anything you need to offload? Trade Authority is always buying. Kiosk right here for you. You the courier? I've been expecting you. Star Parcel has your payment right here. Anything else you need? You need something, dearest?
Keep moving. Scanners won't hurt you. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. What are you looking at? the world's most exotic accident. They found the drug in the fish oil, of all things. But oil is an old story, one of grease and flame. The grease turns the wheels of commerce, and the flame attracts the moths. So be careful walking these streets, my delicate little insect. Venture too close, and you'll burn your wings. I'm in town for business. My client leaves a mess. I clean it up. I'm an independent contractor, working for some very wealthy clients. They open deals, I close them. There might be. I originally came here to complete a business deal, but the client, in a fit of foolishness, decided to close on their own. Rather than dispose of the evidence properly, they left it in a warehouse. Real amateur stuff. So there are some loose ends that need tying, and I prefer a third party handle it. Would you be interested? It's a simple job. I need you to pick something up and sell it. Giving you any more information would be unwise. I'm giving you half of my usual fee, which according to my clients is a ransom three times over but I'm worth every cred. You'll find the merchandise in a locker in the warehouse behind Neon Tactical. Gangs in Ebside often use that area to peddle their sunshine and lollipops, so if shit's pakaru, you'll have to improvise. Once you secure the merchandise, sell it to Coleman Lang at the Trade Authority, so it's part of their regular inventory. Return here when the job is done.
If it's too hot to handle, we can take it off your hands. You need to move some merch. This is the place. Hey, I'm not here to rattle any cages. We get along just fine. As long as I stay out of their business, they stay out of mine. On the rare occasion that I've run into something that's red hot, Ranger Price swings by as a follow-up. We put our heads together and figure it out. It's never really been a problem. You can ask him if you like. Hmm. Not a bad gun. Good balance. Weight. Allied Armaments is a UC company, but their stuff is military grade. But that is not the issue here. That gun is hotter than a frying pan full of fish grease. I'm not giving you anywhere near market rate. Pleasure doing business with you. You done here? Time to move on. Hey, don't find yourself with that. Who's back? What now? Then my client can finally relax. He's a very tense man, you see. Tried to smile once, years ago, and didn't like the fit. But I digress. Here's your payment, as promised. Enjoy the rest of your time here in Neil. Yes, but I never work with the same client twice. Call it a personal rule. Goodbye. change. You can't even imagine how many people ask for an autograph or picture after we've been modding all night. It gets really annoying. Programming the beats? Turning the dials? Come on, stay with me here. Oh, so it's my fault. I suppose next you're going to tell me it's okay for fans to start stealing stuff too. My music slate's gone. Completely vanished. I had all of my new songs figured out on that thing. And someone ripped me off. Total drag. Oh yeah, absolutely. It allows me to step away from myself for a while and harmonize with the universe. There's music out there, you know. If you listen. The trick is not getting hooked on that feeling. I got close to that state a few times, but reality and responsibility has always managed to pull me back. I started playing music when I was ten. My father had an old electronic keyboard he passed down to me, and I fell in love with the thing. By the time I was fifteen, I got my first track and started club hopping. I was pretty young, but with my father as manager, he watched my back. Four years later, and here I am booked into the hottest club in the settled systems. <laughs> Pretty crazy. I feel like I know you. Oh man. Wow. That would be so cool. Yeah, please. I thought I sensed a decent aura around you when you walked up. The thing is, I perform here at the lounge every single night. Which means I can't repeat the same set over and over. I have to keep it real. 
Songs, lyrics, poems, all of my thoughts, basically. We're talking three years of stuff. It's not like I can just rewrite everything. Some of those moments of inspiration are long gone, out of my mind. That's why I write them down. Exactly. So, anything you can do to help is appreciated. Oh, and if you're looking for a lead, talk to Micah. She works the bar at Euphorica, and she's a walking grapevine. Anyway, I got to figure out how I'm going to mod my next set. I'll see you around, okay? Hmm, well, most of the people who come through here are fans, and they're either zoned or just digging the rhythms. That leaves collectors, competitors, or just a thief trying to make a cred. It could be anyone, really. People try to put a price on everything. Doesn't matter if it's music or the stars. If that price is big enough, you start attracting people with bad vibes and long knives. Only a matter of time before you get cut. See you on the flip. space in the members lounge today come in and let your cares melt away for a while I see I'd be willing to divulge this information for the right price because when you work the bar your clients tend to be more honest than they'd like to be and besides Information isn't a drink that you can sample. When clients come to my bar, they expect a certain amount of discretion. Eroding their trust is not something I'm willing to do. For free. Thank you for your business. The man you want goes by the name of Stratos. You'll find him at Madame Savage's. He's what you would call a fan of Miss Borealis's works. Or maybe fanatic is a more accurate term. Either way, he's the one you want. But you didn't hear it from me. He's one of the usual lowlifes you'll find at Madame Savage's. He's also a very fervent admirer of Miss Borealis and her work. It wouldn't surprise me if that admiration extended to her possessions. For fans like him, trinkets and mementos are a way to get closer to the one they admire. Fallen stardust. You're always welcome here.
This song has got me so zoned. <laughs> Mate, oh, I love her music so much. You a fan of Borealis too? I vibe with that bird hard. She's a beast on the beat. And I love her. Got a track in me head right now. Boom! 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 Yeah, you hear it? It's bloody mood, isn't it? I just need some more Aurora so I can get me head bobbing with the wave. Find that zone. Yeah, which is why it pains me to be here and not in the Astral Lounge. I can't stand being away from that place. And, uh... But I can't listen to Borealis if I'm not zoning. That bird's song deserves the best eye Aurora can fly. A fan? Mate, I'm way more than that. I've been following her career since her club hopping days. I know every song, every lyric, and every beat. I can probably tell you the number of hairs on her head, if you cared about that sort of thing. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing weird about it. I just vibe with her music on like a cellular level. You understand? In fact, I've made a whole bloody career out of following that woman. <laughs> Hell, I probably know that bird better than she knows herself. It's the way she makes the colours dance. With most beats, you get these colourful flashes and the world gets all wavy-like. But Borealis makes the aurora dance like nothing I've ever seen. Her mods puts out a spectrum of colours that don't even exist. When she hits those high notes and you're completely zoned, you don't just ride the wave, you steer it. Just all right. Are you trying to pick a bloody fight with me because it's damn well working? Borealis's mods are an experience. Every note is like a set of hands lifting you up into the zone, real gentle luck. And when it peaks, it's like you reached a whole new state of being. Mate, there's no way in hell I'm giving you this. This slate brings me closer to her. As a biggest fan, I feel like I deserve to have it. I didn't steal anything. Borealis always says her music belongs to her fans. So I just took what was mine. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'll just cite the oldest law in the book. Finders keep. I'm not giving up this slate. Why would I part with the one thing that connects me to her? Yeah, I, I do want what's best for her. I don't want that. She should know I appreciate her. You ain't bluffing, are you? Huh. That makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. As much as I hate to admit it, you're right. Okay, you can have the slate. But next time I stop by, I want to hear a mod so sick it beats the piss out of my brain. Astral Lounge, Euphorica, blah, blah, blah. This place... But, uh... You can make it, sure. Survive it.
take it slow, okay? A fan, really. Although, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. They can get pretty possessive. Doesn't matter if it's my things or my time. Yeah, it's not all bad. Love can be toxic, but can be beautiful. Sometimes, people just confuse the two. But, sounds like it all worked out in the end. I've got my slate, which means the people will get their trip. Inspiration's like a wave. Sometimes, it's hard to catch it before the break. That's what this slate is. A still wave. A feeling frozen in time. And I appreciate you bringing it back to me. Yeah, it looked like nothing was downloaded or tampered with. I'm almost glad it was taken by a fan instead of a competitor. It would have been awful to lose that thing. I was working on a brand new concept piece about floating into the center of existence. I'm not feeling it yet. I'm still working out the last few sections, but eventually I'll give it a spin in the Astral Lounge. Thanks again for finding that thing. Next time, I'll try and keep an eye on it. Soon safe.